Once upon a time, storytelling and character arcs in video gaming were about as simple as you could get. Good guy and bad guy clash over something, good guy prevails, repeats for the sequel. With the increase in scope and cinematic depth over the years, developers and writers within the industry have been able to write characters that we can truly cling on to. Video game characters have personalities, goals, fallacies, and many have secrets. And just like real people, video game characters keep their secrets for a reason. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 horrifying video game character truths you missed. Number 10. Jasper Feeney has a dark secret. Red Dead Redemption 2. Amongst other things, Red Dead Redemption 2 was celebrated for its huge world and wealth of stories of all different sizes that spiralled out into many different directions depending on the actions of the player. When reaching Rhodes, the player may want to have a stop at Rhodes Gunsmith, also known as Jasper Feeney and Son, to stock up on supplies. Despite locals whispering about him claiming to see the ghost of his dead son, Mr Feeney otherwise just seems like yet another face on the road through the game's adventure. However, if you walk past the side of the building, you'll start a potentially otherwise missable series of events. It seems that the shop owner has a young man chained up in his basement. If the player chooses to approach the gunsmith about this, they'll be told the full tale. Jasper's son was accidentally killed whilst out shooting one day, his body dragged into River Rapids, and the distraught salesman took it upon himself to abduct someone that reminded him of his son to replace him. This story has a number of different endings of course, and players can free the abductee or kill or spare either or both of the men. If they leave without resolving the issues in any way however, they'll return later to find that the young man has found his own way out permanently. Number 9. Lieutenant Surge used Pokemon for warfare. Pokemon. Even after 25 years, there are many unanswered questions about the world of Pokemon. Who is the player character's father, and where did he go? In fact, why is the region of Kanto in the original game so strangely bereft of adult men? Most of them are gym leaders or criminals. Lieutenant Surge, Vermilion City's gym leader, may well be the key to the answer. Whilst most boss fights in the game will start with some bravado, Surge's threats come much more closer to home when he proclaims, I tell you kid, electric Pokemon saved me during the war. They zapped my enemies into paralysis, the same as I'll do to you. This one line sparked a lot of things. Firstly, insane mental images of what exactly a Pokemon war looks like. Secondly, fans began theorising on what the war was about, and more specifically, who with. Some theorists even believe that Kanto annexed Johto just years before Pokemon Red and Blue, which is why both regions share the same Elite Four and Pokemon Champion, unlike other locations throughout the series. Either way, Lieutenant Surge is a veteran of some very serious combat, particularly because with this one line, it conjures up the thought of Surge and his Raichu paralyzing and probably killing together on the front lines. Number 8. Widowmaker widowed herself. Overwatch. One of the most successful online multiplayer games of this era, Overwatch popularised the hero shooter genre. Out with the standardised player units, in with the bombastic class system of characters that brought gamers in their droves to its fast and frenetic style. Since the game has no single player or campaign at all to speak of, many players aren't all that aware of each character's individual backstory. They're all pretty wild, but few are quite as dark as Widowmaker. Born Amelie Gilliard, the future sniper was an accomplished ballet dancer and married to Overwatch agent Gerard Lacroix. When their multiple attempt on his life failed, terrorist organisation Talon decided on another route by kidnapping and indoctrinating Amelie. With her memory gone and her personality suppressed, she was sent back home as a sleeper agent. Two weeks later, she killed her husband in his sleep and returned to Talon with her mission complete. From there, the group sculpted her further, training her to be the greatest assassin and changing her physiology. The world rightfully mourned Amelie as a victim of kidnapping, but had no idea that she had completely transformed into the blue-skinned killing machine Widowmaker. Most tragically of all, not only did Widow make her kill her husband in cold blood, but her erased memory means she doesn't even know it. Number 7. Gene's Trauma. No More Heroes. Perhaps the most out of this world bizarre franchise in video gaming, No More Heroes rides a line of being ridiculously silly and over the top violent. Late into the first game in the series, hero Travis Touchdown faces off with Jean. Not only is she responsible for the death of Travis's parents, but has her own dark backstory to boot. In typical No More Heroes fashion, Travis's shocking face off with his half sister continues the game's penchant for fourth rule breaking humour and silliness. Travis demands to know who Jean is, and the antagonist refuses to explain it as it will jack up the age rating of the game. The pair agree that she'll do so at super high speed, and thus the player will catch mere glimpses of what Jean is saying as Travis comically reacts. However, if you slow the cutscene down and watch it back, it's some truly harrowing stuff that explains the story of the suicide of Jean's mother, the future assassin being sexually abused by her father, and her selling her body to pay for training to become a killer. Whilst it's hardly something that should be turned into a gag, developers Grasshopper probably made the right choice making this something that the player will watch back and understand after the fact, as it makes the boss fight with Jean and watching Travis take her life a tad more uncomfortable. 
Number 6. Romani has abducted my aliens. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Whilst Ocarina of Time is Zelda's biggest game changer, fans of the series don't sleep on its sequel. Perhaps the most standout weird entry in the franchise, in many ways it's surprising that Majora's Mask even exists. Putting aside the legendary creepy pastas made about the game, Majora's Mask as a story is often believed to be a metaphor for grief and death. Link must save the land of Termina from being crushed by a descending moon by manipulating the flow of time itself. In one area of the game, the player finds Romani Ranch, which has had strange issues with supernatural beings. Link can fend off these ghosts for a reward, but if he fails then the ranch's cows are seen being sucked up into a flying saucer. If Link fails to save Romani Ranch, or even by virtue of being busy elsewhere, young ranch owner Romani can be found on the game's final day, sat on a box looking disorientated, clutching her head and speaking very little. She doesn't appear to have much short-term memory, implying that it's been wiped after the previous night's events. Clearly, the aliens took more than just the cows. Whatever they've done to Romani is left a mystery which is perhaps scarier than ever knowing. For all the upset stuff in Majora's Mask, this is right up there as one of the most concerning. Number 5. Lucas Baker was always a killer. Resident Evil 7. Most memorably, Resident Evil 7 pits the player in a fight for protagonist Ethan Winter's life as he clashes with the indestructible, insane Baker family. Who could forget the game of cat and mouse with the terrifying patriarch Jack Baker? In a late game cutscene, an altogether much more normal Jack inhabits Ethan's mind to explain that he and his family were once decent and kind people before they came under the control of creepy biohazard child Evelyn. Jack absolves himself and his entire family, as any father would if he didn't realise his son was already a killer. Whilst the on screen event of Resident Evil 7 take place in 2017, notes and diaries in the game date the Baker family's turn to the dark side as recently as 2014, which means Lucas's diary, in which he talks about murdering his childhood bully, predates the arrival of Evelyn by quite some time. Lucas's journal is written in an undated year, but from the way it's written sounds like it's from the perspective of a child. After being called a crazy head, Lucas details locking a fellow child, Oliver, in the attic. A torn page from the diary describes a knocking sound that eventually goes quiet, and a month later, a rising stink and weird juice dripping from the ceiling. Grim. Number 4. Mia Vodello's Tragic Past – Psychonauts Cult hit's 2005 adventure title Psychonauts on the surface seems like bright, colourful and wacky fun about psychic powers. However, a brain extracting villain and the ability to step into the minds of various characters to help them overcome their trauma make the title a hell of a lot deeper than most people anticipate. One of the many characters protagonist Raz comes across is Psychonaut tutor Mia Vodello, who can teach the player how to levitate. Vodello, floating in the air, is a 1960s hippie stereotype with a bright voice and chilled personality. Inside of the mind of Agent Vodello, however, there's an appropriately hidden room that contains a memory that your teacher has chosen to bury. Within it, players can flip through a slideshow that tells the story of Mia's previous life as the owner of an orphanage that went up in flames. As a psychic, Mia could hear the screams of the children as they perished inside. If the player explores further, they will discover that Mia has her nightmares locked up behind barriers, but can still hear the voices of the children begging their matron to save them. Mia is proof that sometimes the happiest characters hide the darkest tragedies. Number 3. Jolder, the Tyrannical Shopkeep. The Elder Scrolls 3, Morrowind. Open world games give developers many opportunities to tuck in small notes of world building and character depth that many players won't come across or even think much of. As Elder Scrolls 3's World of Morrowind is attacked by the Blight, one particular seemingly trustworthy citizen of Telmora has a dark secret. A note in Jolder's potion shop apologises for the lack of Blight treating potions in her store and recommends that residents use common disease potions to resist and treat any outbreaks. However, the Blight isn't a common disease and cannot be cured in such a way. Surely a seasoned apothecary like this should know better. Boxes upstairs in Jolder's store that are marked with do not open notices contain more cure blight potions than the shopkeep is willing to share with her customers. Finally, if the player finds a note next to Jolder's bedspread, it all becomes clear. The blight cure is all mine, they won't get their hands on any of it. When they're gone, I shall reign in the tower. Not just a humble shopkeep, Jolder clearly has grander plans for herself and will take advantage of the blight to do so. Number 2. Mario is a bully, Super Mario Brothers. Who exactly is Wario? On the outset, the yellow and purple branded villain seems to exist only to be a parallel to Nintendo's all-star hero Mario. He's greedy, smelly and generally unpleasant and that is essentially his entire background. In terms of the games, we've never received much reason for why Wario is the way he is and why he seems to oppose the saviour of the Mushroom Kingdom to the lengths that he does. However, tucked away in issue 44 of Nintendo Power Magazine is a comic strip that not only attempts to give Wario his much-deserved backstory, but 
sets the record straight. He's only after Mario because the plumber treated him like dirt as a child. Picking plants together with Mario choosing to pull the turnips, leaving Wario with the biting piranha plants, and playing Sheriff and Rustler together, and laughing at his one attempt to play Sheriff. Mario sounds like the most entitled brat who never learned to share or treat others fairly, and considering that when Wario confronts his rival about this 20 years later, the mustachioed bully just tells Wario to not be such a wimp. Have a heart, Mario. Number 1. GLaDOS was made against her will, Portal 2. Portal 2 truly stepped up everything about the original game. It was bigger, bolder, more expansive, more expressive, and told the winding tale of the rise and fall of Aperture Science. As players explore the underbelly of Aperture Laboratories, they're famously introduced to CEO Cave Johnson and his charismatic, if not cavalier, mind. Joining him occasionally is his assistant Carolyn, and the two clearly have a great admiration for one another. As the story progresses, it becomes clear that Carolyn eventually became serious antagonist and AI lunatic GLaDOS. In Johnson's recording, as the man reaches his deathbed, he muses on the idea of storing human consciousness on a compact disc. He demands that, should he pass on before the technology is realised, Carolyn should be made CEO and given this treatment. In his words, she'll say she can't, but you make her. Whilst this implies forcefulness, cut dialogue found in the game's code really compounds it. In unused audio, Carolyn can be heard outright saying, Mr Johnson, I don't want this. The trauma that the assistant suffered, her mind now locked on a computer against her will, might actually go to some lengths explaining just how she became so twisted. It really puts all of GLaDOS's hysterically evil sentiments into a more uncomfortable perspective, especially because GLaDOS deletes what remains of Carolyn's mind before the end of the game. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, and any other dark secrets that you can think of from video game characters that most people might have missed. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.